But remember that the research is the backbone of the story, but it's not the actual story. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tara East, a writer, scholar, teacher, and author of the mystery novel Every Time He Dies. So if you've been following along these last few weeks, then you already know that I've been doing a series all about writing rules of famous authors. So far, we've covered Octavia Butler's Nine Rules of Writing, Natalie Goldberg's Seven Rules of Writing, and Kurt Vonnegut's Eight Rules of Writing. Now, last week, we began part one of Stephen King's 20 Rules for Writing, and this week, I'm going to be covering the remaining 10 rules. As I've prefaced in the other videos in this series, all of the advice in these videos is simply a means of inspiration and education. If you want to adopt any of these rules, by all means, have at it. But if something doesn't work or appeal to you, then simply leave it behind. Remember, there are no rules to writing other than the ones you decide on for yourself. Now let's get to it. So last week we covered the first 10 rules of Stephen King's 20 rules for writing. And now we're gonna pick up with rule number 11. There are two secrets to success. King attributes his success to staying physically healthy and staying married. While a literal reading of this statement won't be applicable to everyone, the truth behind it is. Writing is actually not the most important thing in your life people are. So you need to nourish those relationships. Writing is a solitary activity, but that doesn't mean you need to live in solitude. We need to take care of our relationships and our bodies, not so that we can write, but so we can have happy lives. Rule number 12, write one word at a time. Now this rule really echoes Anne Lamont's famous anecdote, which is shared in her book, Bird by Bird. There are many ways to write a book, but ultimately when you boil it down to the barest of bones, novels are written one word at a time. King urges aspiring writers to stay present, to focus on the scene at hand, and to not become too distracted by thinking ahead. Rule number 13, eliminate distractions. Now let's be honest, this rule is timeless. While the form may change over time, I think we can all agree that distractions are one of the biggest killers to creativity. Now look, you're not stupid. You know what you need to do. Switch off the internet, switch off your phone, close the curtains, close the door, and commit yourself to staying with the story that's in front of you. Rule number 14, stick to your own style. Reading allows you to become familiar with the writing styles of other authors. And while mimicking your favorite writer is a good place to start, aspiring writers must develop their own voice and style. The world already has a Stephen King, a J.K. Rowling, a Lee Child, a Toni Morrison, and Octavia Butler. But what it doesn't have, rule number 15, dig. Stephen King describes himself as a discovery writer. For him, the story reveals itself to him as he is writing it. King believes that stories are found things, that they are fossils in the ground. He believes that the story, he believes that the story already exists and that it's his job as the writer to slowly dig up that fossil using all of the tools in his writer's toolbox. For him, writing is a practice of excavation where the story is uncovered through the practice of writing itself. Rule number 16, take a break. Now, I'm not sure that Stephen King takes his own advice, but nonetheless, he does recommend that writers take breaks from their work so that they can see their story with fresh eyes. There are a number of ways that you can interpret this rule. You can put the manuscript aside for a couple of months and then return to it with fresh eyes so that you're able to edit it objectively. You could also see this rule as permission to not write on weekends or at nighttime, 
or you could incorporate mini breaks into your writing sessions so that you avoid fatigue, eye strain, and the general discomfort that comes from sitting in front of a computer for hours on end. Rule number 17, leave out the boring parts and kill your darlings. This rule is pretty self-explanatory, but if there is a sentence or a scene in your novel that is not revealing character or moving the plot forward, or that is otherwise dull, then it's gotta go. Rule number 18, the research shouldn't overshadow the story. So many authors break this rule. If you had to do extensive, many authors break this rule. If you have had to do extensive research for your novel, then do your readers a favor. Do not hit them over the head with all of this acquired knowledge. They don't need to know it. Include the details that are interesting and that bring the story to life, but remember that the research is the backbone of the story, but it's not the actual story. Rule number 19, you become a writer simply by reading and writing. Writing workshops, classes, clubs, conferences, and craft books are valuable, and you can learn so much, especially if you're just starting out. But ultimately, the most valuable lessons you'll learn are the ones that you arrive at by yourself. Reading and writing are the foundations of your craft. Read well, by which I mean think about what you're reading while you're reading. Look for the strings in the story, dissect the work, and consider what is going on and what is not. When editing your own work, be sure to question your own decisions. Does this scene really need to be here? Are my characters believable? Is the dialogue interesting? Have I used too many adverbs? Rule number 20, writing is about getting happy. Now this is perhaps the best rule. We need to remember that writing is fun, or at least it's supposed to be. Now, I actually can't wrap this rule up any better than King himself, so I want to end with a direct quote. Writing isn't about making money, getting famous, getting dates, getting laid, or making friends. In the end, it's about enriching the lives of those who will read your work and enrich your own life as well. It's about giving up, getting well, and getting over. Getting happy, okay. Writing is magic, as much the water of life as any other creative art. The water is free, so drink. And there you have it, guys. Those are Stephen King's 20 rules of writing. Now, if you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button or give it a thumbs up. And know that you can check out all of the other videos on this channel if you want even more writing advice. Also, feel free to check out my website, tareast.com. I have over 150 writing advice blogs on the website, so I'm sure there'll be something there that will support you during this time. While you're there, be sure to join my weekly email newsletter, because when you do, I'll send you a cheat sheet called The 7 Ways to Stay Motivated as a Writer, which is the perfect complement to this video series. If you're looking for a new read, then consider my mystery novel, Every Time He Dies. It's gotten some pretty great reviews. Thank you so much for showing up again this week. I really appreciate it. I hope you're staying safe, you're staying calm, and that you're able to get writing done when and if you can. Thank you so much for showing up again this week, guys, and I'll see you next time.